Hello! Ooh, didn't see you there. Ah! How corny is that shit? I'm the Chunky Jeweler and I've been manufacturing jewelry for the past 26 years. I've been a diamond setter for 15 to 16 of those years. And uh, welcome to my channel. Uh, this is part two of how to make a wedding band and I would highly recommend that you go and watch part one I'll try and link it up here I'm not that good with the editing part yet but uh, we'll give it a try hey but so yeah once again welcome I hope you can learn something from my channel and uh, if you've got any questions any queries please feel free to comment in the comment below and if you don't mind, hit me up with a like, perhaps a subscribe and share with like-minded friends. That'll be awesome. Uh, it'll help generate the footprint for the channel. And it's uh, essentially what we strive to do. So, um, if you're ready to see the part two, how we make the wedding band. I'm just about to start the soldering process. So, let's get into it. See you at the bench. Alrighty then. <clears throat> so we're back. So if you watched the previous video, it may have sounded like I'm going to do this whole ring in one go. But I've decided to make it in two parts. Just for the fact that it might be getting a bit long and a bit tedious and a bit boring but I might still change my mind and do it in one video we'll see <laughs> so if you clicked on the video part one then this is part two welcome and if um, it's all in one video Whoops. So, that aside, let's get soldering. So, let's get the gas on. I'll get some solder. I'll get the block in the screen. Let's move that to there. Okay, let's move that up. That'd be okay. Let's turn that light off. That might be a bit better. So we can zoom in. Let's turn a bit more. Yeah. That should be good. Let's put it in the focus block. Sorry, you guys gotta ignore me. Especially when I'm doing this. I'm still getting used to the recording everything. So sometimes I tend to think out loud. Other side of it, I'm technically sitting here talking to myself as we're going along. That's not crazy at all. I've got a light here somewhere. Oh, there we go. Let's see if we can get this one up there as well. Okay, good to go.
So with this, where's the silver? We need a long hot flame, not a sharp flame. Let's put that there. Flux. So I've cut a little square piece of plate solder. I prefer using plate solder. And the only reason for that is because I've never used the wire solder. I use it one of these days. Okay, so I've balled the solder up into a little ball. And lovely. And you might have noticed while I was Preparing to solder this, I gave it a quick anneal as well. And annealing is the process of warming up the metal so you can change the metal particles. And that'll cause the metal to be a little bit softer, more malleable. Seasick with me mucking around. Cool. So there's the ring. All soldered. Where's the focus block? Flux has gone blue. So yeah, time for the asset. I cannot see it. Solar flowed very nicely all the way through to the other side. Let's put that down the way again. So what I generally like to do before I get to soldering, uh, stretching it round or putting it on the ring stretcher, I'm going to just give it a bit of a tip. Honestly, I don't know if it does anything. In my mind, it does. It just. Um, Hardens up the joint, hardens up, toughens up the joint. That's the word I've been looking for. So, oops. Just tap the side a bit. Beauty. It's all good. So, off to the ring stretcher. So if I remember correctly, <coughs> we said we were going to make it a size P. So, let's get going. So I normally try and do it a little bit on the one side, flip it over, then the other side again. So we're currently at size O. Uh, like I said in the beginning of the video, I like to go fractions smaller, 
but it helps you to get to the right size and having the ring nice and round and it gets work hardened a bit as well so just short of P bang on P leading edge perfect Had the ring in the pickling acid for approximately 10 minutes and as you can see it's looking way better so Cool, cool bananas. Focus right, yes, cool. So now we're gonna start cleaning up. I'm gonna use my older more blunt file. And I tend to like to start with the sides, keeping the file nice and even. Make sure when you're touching the back bottom side, your file doesn't wobble or rock to the sides or back to front nice and even filing this side and that side both at the same time and you may have noticed what I've just done there don't try to avoid dragging your file back when you're filing because that tends to dull your file Flip it over to the other side, so don't do that. So when you work in a manufacturing workshop and it's all about production on a daily basis, where I'm at in my daily job for the past three and a half years, you tend to throw the normal rules out the door just get production out and that's why I've started this channel just to get a bit of my passion back again but obviously to teach you guys because <clears throat> as we all know the manufacturing jewelry trade <clears throat> is a dying trade especially with handmade stuff CAD I mean they sold a lot of jewelers out there but most people are doing CAD design and computer aided and casting and just cleaning the castings which I'll do as well and I'll show you how to do that um, but we'll start with the basics plain wedding band you can make this this is the this is the bones or the, the, the foundation on many of rings to be made you can change, convert making this you can do a Solitaire, you can do a half round band, you can either do a little ring with stones or set all the way around. Options are endless. If you can do this, so that's where we, why we're starting. And I know a lot of jewelers, I've, I've trained three or four jewelers myself in, in the years that I've been a master goldsmith and tend to put them on to piercing first, cutting out stuff. Which is all good and well, there's nothing wrong with that. We'll get to piercing stuff. But I feel it's more satisfying being able to make a ring. And that's why I decided with this channel to start with making a flat wedding band first instead of doing the piercing stuff. And piercing is nice, but it's boring. And it's something you need to practice. You have to practice it because it's a necessity. But still, doing the wedding band. Give me a thumbs up, please help the channel grow, and uh, we can continue making videos. Okay, 
Enough yapping. Let's get to cleaning. Okay, I'm back. Couldn't find my spindle. But I found a new one that I bought a while back. So I'll just do that. Sounds good? Sounds good. I will still show you how to make a proper emery dr paper drum. I don't generally use it just like this. I've got a different method. But, uh, so with this in my eye. So when you stand place when you em emery paper the inside, don't be too aggressive. Don't go idling in one spot. Always keep it moving. A little circular motion. Okay, so that avoids making little divots on the inside, little dents. Because the sandpaper can be very unforgivable. Or emery paper. You guys must let me know in the comments which you prefer. I'm used to saying sandpaper. But I don't know that's from my home language, Afrikaans. Skir papir. Skir means sand. And obviously papir is paper. But you let me know which one you prefer. Okay, so let's use the old. emery stick for the sides what's this 800 we'll go with 800 nice all right sand down I know a lot of people will put it there well, I'll do that in the last. That's the last resort. Move this one up a bit. This is the final sanding stage. You get a nice edge on it. Nice crisp edge. Just sand it until we get rid of all the file marks, which it seem, it seems to be all gone. Something is sticking and it's annoying me. Okay, so that bit is done. And with regards to the outside. I like to use a little needle file. Use the outside. This one's too tiny. Let's use that. I just feel you get a bit more control in the needle file. And you don't take off the outside edges. You can't be too aggressive with the needle file. So just make your way around the whole ring. With this process, you end up taking off all the little dents, all the little blemishes, little imperfections, little bruise marks on the pliers to get that nice edge on it. And you see, I tend to file slightly at an angle this way because if you look at your file, everything runs diagonally. 
then you kind of go, you end up going over the edge, but you use the band as a level, as a leveling point. Keep it all nice and even. Quick, quick, and go all the way around. It's starting to look like a ring. So I'm mean, now I might just seal some paper from this drum. And I'll wrap it around the file. And I do this again, same reason why I use the small file. If you use the emery stick, then you would most likely take off the edge or round off the edge. Now, fair enough, if it's meant to be rounded or softened edge, it obviously doesn't matter. But if I want to keep a nice crisp edge, I've only recently learned or saw a new, another trick with getting a nice flat band using a graver or the side of a graver. And I'll still experiment with that and then make a separate video because that will work well for making a bevel edge on the band. And this band will probably still be in another video where I would show you how to do that. Do little lines on it. Make a little bit beveled edge. Maybe a little hammered finish. A textured finish on it. Who knows? The, the options are limitless or endless. And that's the nice thing with making a wedding band, of knowing how to make a wedding band. Or just a band for that matter, not a wedding band and such. <coughs> but making a band or ring. So you could experiment, play around. And you could from date dot start making bands, different textures on it. Whip up a quick website and it's really easy to do these days and start selling your products online. Easy as. Yeah, nothing good. I need to go farm off this time. show you another trick with the sandpaper drum which is quite handy but you've got to be careful almost there I might just speed this bit up in the editing so I'll go quiet for a while just to finish up So there we go. Outside is done. Ish. Now I'll show you with the paper drum. Holding the sandpaper firmish. Just stir it lightly. Ah, oh, there it is. Using some electric tape. Very lightly, very lightly. Right outside of the band. You want to be very careful to not to hold still in one spot. But you will move out. 
And there might be a few other professional builders out there looking at this video saying, what the hell is this dude doing? Because this is frowned upon in the jewelry industry. But once again, like I said earlier, I have to find ways and means to work faster at my day job. And this this was one of the one of the tricks that I've adapted. And uh, it just works well. If you're careful, you don't have any problems. So next step, second to last I would think is softening the inside edge and this bit is crucial if you want to make a good fitting good quality band that sets you apart from anyone else trying to make their own band at home Using a little Moore's disc, just go through the inside and run it along the edge. Not too much, not too fast, not too aggressive. All you want to do is take off that sharp corner, essentially make it fit like a comfort fit band, but it's not. You're not losing any thickness of the metal. You're not making the edges sharp. Or making it appear narrow. Flip it around, do the same on the other side. All the way around, a good tip. Start at the stem. And then you work your way around. Using the stamp as your starting point, you work all the way around till you get back to the stamp again. Oh, there you go, back at the stamp. See now that inside edge, you have a nice crisp outside edge, but you have a softened inside edge, which is nice and comfy. Oh, well, let's trade this one out again for the sandpaper disc. Just to get that moist disc is a bit coarse. Get that coarseness off. And while I do this, I actually just go from the inside onto the, on from the edge to say the, the center of the band all the way across the band on the inside. Because that helps to just get the core sandpaper marked off and a little AD and polishing. You don't have to polish aggressively to get all the sandpaper marked off. And then working your way all the way, all the way around again till you get to the stamp. And just have a quick squeeze to see if there's any other marks or vanishes. A little bit of an inspection, always inspect the ring as you're going along. So that, there's no surprise at the end of it. And oh, again, so restart, band, melt it. If you missed something, big porous hole, or um, fire scale. We'll still learn about fire scale. That's a nice little evil oxidization that happens to struggle when you overheat the metal. Around the same sandpaper, just on the outside edge to get rid of any mark. Look at that. Okay. 
I guess the side is just done. Let's do the other side. Just the same. And all the way around. Done. Beauty. Perfect. Now I might just use the sandpaper. We'll do nice firm emery stick. Thousand two hundred. And it's a little bit worn as well as you can see. Work my way all the way around. Get it all nice and tidy. Almost made it all the way around. Just file the outside again. I want to file a little bit of a sanding because I like a nice, crisp, shiny. Whew, it is nasty outside. Okay. So, lastly, but arguably the most satisfying stage of making a ring and have a sip of coffee cheers okay as I was saying arguably the most satisfying stage of making a ring is the polishing. Let's use a felt buff or a polishing mop. You can buy it at any jewelry supply store. You can even buy them off the other sites available on the internet. There's no all sorts of stuff. Discount the prices, but do you remember they're not quality. Well, most of them are. I suppose there are quality ones out there. They pay a bit more. But they last quite a long time. And the plan is to show you video, make videos for you, show you the maintenance of your tools. I've made a use of this video that I'm going to make in the future. So it might be worth your while to like and subscribe. You won't lose anything. You'll just gain some knowledge. And even if you're not a jeweler or not planning to be a jeweler, I think it'd be interesting to know how these things are done. So, yeah. Cool. Time to move to the polishing machine and do the outside and the sides. See you there. Okay, so I have polished it, placed an ultrasonic. There we have it. Our lovely sterling silver flat 
way back. So a few water marks on there, which I will remove a little bit later. But otherwise, I think it's looking pretty good. Well, there we have it, how to make a silver wedding band. Hope you guys enjoyed the video and um, hope you've learned something. And hopefully you'll come back and watch the next yeah. video. Contemplating on probably the next one would be make how to make a half round wedding band. And um, yeah, and after that we'll do something where we could add stones to the ring and uh, perhaps we could do, hmm, what do we do? We could do how to make a collet, how to do a bezel setting, and all that lovely stuff. And we'll get to chain making, repairs, all the ins and outs of jewelry making. I'm hoping to grow this channel, so it'd be awesome if you could like and subscribe and share it among your friends or other like-minded people and hopefully soon i'll be out of the garage and into the new workshop uh, probably two or three more videos will be shot at the bench over here and then i'll do a video where i'll show you how to build your bench so this is a bench that i got second hand um, it's a bit big, it's actually a two-seater, which I'll show you in the video when I'm going to revamp, take it apart, cut this excess bit off, make it smaller so it's more convenient for the new workshop, and less cumbersome, that's the big word for today. But nonetheless, thanks for watching if you made it this far. Um, See you in the next movie. Or oh, see you in the next video. Have a good evening, good day, wherever you are, sleep tight, have a nice day, work well, work hard. Chunky jeweler out. <laughs>